today we're taking our reading test. Our reading test is going to be different than what it normally is. So go ahead and put your name at the top. On our test, you're going to come up with an invention. And now it needs to be inspired by something from nature. So a lot of the things that we read about this week were inspired by like birds or insects or bats, spiders, any of those things. Okay, so think of something new. What would your invention be and what's it inspired by? And then at the bottom, you're going to need to draw a picture of it. To help us, we're going to read a myth about one about another invention. Okay, this is a myth, so it means it's not real, but it tries to help explain how something came to be. Compare text. Read about how fish bones inspired a young inventor long ago in Athens. Perdix invents the saw. In the days of gods and goddesses, right away we know this is fiction because that's not because that's not real. Then, um, here we go, let's start reading, sorry. In the days of gods and goddesses, there lived an inventor named Daedalus. He was famous throughout Greece for his good ideas and his bad temper. One day, Daedalus heard a knock on his workshop door. Who's interrupting my work, he growled. It's me, uncle, his 12-year-old nephew, Perdix, said his 12-year-old nephew, Perdix. I want to be a great inventor, too. Will you teach me? Dedalius' back hurt from chopping firewood. His shoulder ached from sweeping. He didn't really want to teach Perdix. Then he got an idea. If you do all the chores, I'll let you watch me invent things, he said. Perdix did the chores, cooked meals, and observed how Dedalius worked. The boy had some clever ideas. He wanted to make a smaller axe for cutting branches for firewood. Dedalius disagreed. Just leave the inventing to me, he hissed. Next page, page 271. One afternoon, Perdix roasted a large fish for lunch. After eating, Dedalius licked his fingers and smacked his lips. That was pretty good, Perdix, but I've eaten better, he said. Perdix sighed and started washing the dishes. In the process, he cut his finger on the jagged backbone of the fish. He held the backbone up and studied its sharp edges. I can imitate this design and make a fine tool for cutting wood, he thought. The next day, Perdix sawed all the firewood before Dedalius awoke. How did you finish your work so early? Dedalius snarled. It was easy with my new invention, said Perdix. He showed his uncle the saw. Dedalius was reluctant to praise his clever nephew. It should be my invention because you cooked that fish for me. He sniffed. Perdix just smiled. He now realized that he was a great inventor, too. Okay, so Perdix used that fish backbone to help create his tool for cutting wood. All right, so think about your invention and what you want to make. It might help you if you look at nature. So either just look outside and you can see um, things outside your window, maybe like trees or something or other plants that can help inspire you. Or feel free to look at National Geographic Kids. If you look at different animals there, you might get inspired for an invention. Good luck. I can't wait to see what your inventions are. Line six and seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So why not a vertical whirling winding bug that hops like a cricket crossing a rug? Okay, so he's comparing the helicopter to a cricket, all right? So for number three, compares the helicopter to a cricket. Then in number four, reread Ornithopter. That was the second one. Use details to explain what the narrator thinks about the ornith orn ornithor. Do you agree with the narrator's point of view? Okay, so I want you to go back and reread the second poem and explain what the author thinks about the ornithopter there. 